Salutations, everybody. It is Mr. Profit Play. <laughs> I can't say that in all seriousness. Yes, welcome to 2019, where a guy can wear a weird-ass Sonic t-shirt and talk about a game where you rip and tear. Hey, within 24 hours of the video talking about Bethesda's very strange silence on both Doom Eternal and Fallout 76's Wastelanders update, we have a very intriguing answer, which is that Doom Eternal has been delayed until March of 2020. So what this video is gonna focus on is of course that delay, but more so the importance underneath it all. The very smart decision Bethesda is making that we didn't see them make last year with Fallout 76 and how it's ultimately a lesson learned from them and a step in the right direction, even if it's something that is common practice in our industry. It's nice to see Bethesda get back on track. So before we get into all of that, let's talk about the actual news itself and get into what's happening with Doom Eternal. Throughout the development of Doom Eternal, our goal has been to deliver a game that exceeds your greatest expectations across the board. To make sure we're delivering the best experience for Doom Eternal to live up to our standards of speed and polish, we've made the decision to extend our launch date by a few months to March 20th, 2020. We know many fans will be disappointed by this delay, but we are confident that Doom Eternal will deliver a gaming experience that is worth the wait. In addition to shifting the Doom Eternal launch date, we've made a couple of other changes we wanted you to know about. Number one is Invasion Mode, which will allow you to enter another player's game as a playable demon, will release as a free update shortly after launch. That actually sounds incredibly dope. Doom Eternal for Nintendo Switch will release after the other platforms. We will announce that date in the future. And Doom 64 will be available on Xbox One, PS4, and PC. In addition to the Switch, we are adding Doom 64 as a pre-ordered bonus for Doom Eternal on all platforms, so you'll be able to download and play this classic game for free just for pre-ordering Doom Eternal. Doom 64 will also be released on March 20th, 2020 on all platforms. We are grateful to every Doom fan for your dedication and support, and we can't wait to rip and tear right alongside you in software. First and foremost, do not undermine the amount of months both the current version that's going to be on PS4, Xbox One, and PC got pushed back, but also the Switch version. This game was not ready, and I mentioned in a podcast a number of weeks ago to Carrick that I just heard some things about Doom's development. I didn't want to fear monger. I didn't want to worry anybody. I didn't want to cast speculation out there. I just said I had heard some things about the development of this game, and what I had heard is it needed a delay, big time. What we had seen was not representative of the final product. And so now that seems to have come to fruition. And I think it's ultimately the right choice because it shows Bethesda learned that they don't want to have another repeat of last fall where 76 was buggy. It should have been delayed for a much longer time to get the game right and then release it. And maybe they would have avoided a lot of issues, a lot of bad PR. And so they're looking at Doom Eternal and saying, this isn't ready, we're gonna move it back. And I think that is very good. Yes, as I mentioned in the beginning, this is common practice for a lot of companies, but Bethesda has stepped away from said common practice in many facets of their work. So I'm very happy to see them get back on track in that form. But we have to also look at how impactful of a move it is to get rid of your one and only big fall title, especially in the year Bethesda has had. When you take a look at what's come out for Bethesda, it's really just Rage 2, we have some updates for games like Elder Scrolls Online, Elder Scrolls Blades, Wolfenstein Youngblood came out. Ultimately, there wasn't a big launch that came for Bethesda, and Doom Eternal was that. There were updates for all of their live service games, like I said, ESO, ES Blades, Elder Scrolls Legends, Fallout 76. They were all getting updates, but I think Bethesda's game plan for 2019 was that 76 would be much more successful than they had anticipated, so they could sort of raise the bottom line a little bit by just relying on live services while they had less frequent releases. Rage 2, while I thought it was a very, very, very fun game, I still recommend it, did not light up the sales chart, and Doom Eternal releasing at the end of the fall season probably wouldn't have helped that game's sales either. Now, I don't know if it's going to be any better because, as we did note, it got moved to March 20th, 2020, which is the same month as Final Fantasy VII Remake, Animal Crossing, and Cyberpunk 2020 will be on the horizon 
for us. So Doom Eternal has some very steep competition. Obviously, I don't think people who are playing Animal Crossing are going to particularly be looking into Doom Eternal, but that is a release date that is currently shared. And I know a lot of people are really excited for Animal Crossing. Final Fantasy VII Remake, once again, maybe not in the same genre, but what I'm saying is this is someone's $60 that can go a number of ways in one month and all the options look very high quality. For me personally, if I had to pick only one, it would be Final Fantasy VII Remake because uh, I stay loyal to my boy. Anyway, with a barren 2019 for Bethesda and no real crazy good sales, what we've now seen is Wastelanders, the Fallout 76 update, transform into Bethesda's big, I put that in quotes, fall release. It really isn't anything huge, and especially now that we haven't heard much about it, but at the same time, this has opened up a great window for Bethesda Game Studios to really surprise the world. Compared to prior falls, this year is particularly light on games. Don't get me wrong, we still have a couple of weekly releases, but it's been much easier this time around to really pick what we want to play. I think September was the worst part for just a couple of weeks, but after that, things have really lightened up and we've seen a lot of underrated games like Concrete Genie come up. And so the point of all this is to highlight that Wastelanders has the potential to have additional exposure because really the only last two big launches coming are the Outer Worlds and of course Call of Duty Modern Warfare. Don't get me wrong, there are a lot of other cool games that are scattered about, but I think those two stand tall as the biggest ones. And with Wastelanders being a free update, and let's say Bethesda Game Studios does nail it, this could put them in a very good position to bounce back because there will be the opportunity for more coverage. This is Bethesda's only fall thing, so if it is good, it will be the only thing Bethesda related that we're talking about. I think maybe this could have been a part of the plan. Ultimately, okay, now we have more eyes on 76, but this also means if 76 Wastelanders isn't ready, which I personally haven't heard anything about, but if it isn't ready, and then they do release that, and it does end up doing poorly, then that's just the final nail in the coffin for this game. Myself and Juice have were actually chatting about it, and we both said if they don't nail Wastelanders, that very well may be it. I was also doing a little bit of thinking while I was researching for this video, and inadvertently, this really made Bethesda's E3 2019 conference as well a complete sunk cost. Think about it. Think of what was shown there, Rage 2, probably the biggest release of Bethesda now in 2019, was already out. We did get to see an official response to the Fallout 76 backlash, which was, in my opinion, quite interesting. And I think ultimately Bethesda did the best job they could. They took it off the chin. They announced a great Battle Royale mode, which was quite fun. And they announced an update to the game that people have been asking for, which is Wastelanders. But outside of that, we had Ghostwire Tokyo, which looked exciting, but then Akumi Nakamura left Tango Gameworks. So now we're a little unsure about that project. And Doom Eternal, the big game for all of E3 2019 for Bethesda, received a delay. Everything else though was little mobile games, little updates, nothing really big though. Maybe Deathloop. Deathloop from Arcane looks cool because, well, it's Arcane. It's currently, as of this point in time, Bethesda's strongest developer, in my opinion. As much as I love Bethesda Game Studios, objectively speaking, after 76, I'd say they got lowered. Arcane's just constantly been climbing up, and I'd say they're at the same level right now, although they do respectively different things. Point being, though, is what came out of Bethesda's E3 conference that they have to show for this year. Wolfenstein Youngblood, which, by the way, I think received like a quick trailer, and when it came to the launch of the game, nothing really was happening with that game. Bethesda's been really strange with marketing these titles uh, because they've always been very quiet about all of them. Every single launch this year, outside of Rage 2, which is a game they should have been very confident about, in my opinion, that received a lot of marketing, promotion, tweets, discussions, but nothing else. So. Just keep in mind for the future, ladies and gentlemen, the lesson learned here for us is when Bethesda's quiet, I'm looking at you, Wastelanders, when Bethesda's quiet, it doesn't really indicate good things, like any company, but Bethesda in particular, because usually that silence, like we just saw in Youngblood, like we just saw in the delay of Doom Eternal, has in turn led to some sad news. Now, the choice to delay Doom Eternal naturally is a good one for the health of the game, for the health of the studio, but it was not an easy battle, right? Because they had to fight tooth and nail to get that delay. 
So ultimately, I'm happy for the folks at id Software. I know they really wanted this delay and I'm glad they got it. Hopefully, but I doubt it now, there won't be microtransactions in Doom Eternal, but I imagine if they're extending the development time for the game, they're also releasing it in a very busy period in what's going to be one of the busiest years. And on the outside looking in, best years for gaming, I think they'll probably want to go ahead and give the game some legs in the terms of monetization. That's just speculation though, haven't heard anything on that. Just wanted to give my thoughts there because I don't view Doom Eternal as this cash cow. Doom is very fun. I like Doom a decent amount, but I don't view it as this big sales charter, especially when you look at what it's launching with. It's gonna be some tough competition. So Bethesda's gonna have to do something as a business to make some money in advance. But that'll do it for me, ladies and gentlemen. I'd love to hear from all of you in the comments down below. What do you think about this Doom Eternal delay, the change from Bethesda to actually listen to feedback and make the proper change? Are you surprised? Are you not surprised? Let me know in the comments. Oops, I burped a little bit. Let me know in the comments down below. Other than that, follow me on Twitter, follow me on Instagram. Those links are in the description down below, along with my Patreon. Do consider supporting that as it fuels all the content I create here. Stay sexy, stay active. I love you all. Peace.